Okay, welcome back to Unreal Engine ND. So, what you need to do is, I don't think you're going to need the enemy.h or the enemy.cpp. But if you remember, a while back we created the enemy melee.h, enemy melee.cpp. And the reason we did that is because, see, here in the enemy, an enemy can be melee or ranged or whatever, it can be any type of enemy. Uh, aerial enemy so in the enemy class we have the basics of it there we have like the health stamina or whatever an enemy would have so and we have an enemy melee so we just want to do the melee stuff there and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open that up and we'll go into the private section. Actually, what I need to do is forward declare stuff. So, the reason we separated it is because we want to separate it from melee to range. Because with the range, you can have, you know, at what distance it can be and things like that. Now, if you have a class that does melee and range, uh, you can create another class for that um, so however you want to set it up I'm just showing you how you can separate these classes and how that they can be used with each other because right here we have a enemy that eight enemies so a enemy melee can use all the functions and said a enemy has access to it because it's a child class so what I'm going to do is class U anim montage. Go ahead and forward declare that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste it what I have from another project. We need to do more in the header. So I uh, believe we need a melee attack melee attack montage we have and we need a melee attack so the melee attack I think I'm just going to put that in a public section I don't think I need access to it so it's not going to go in public Void melee attack. If we do need access to it, then we can either do a getter or we can throw it up in public. Uh, more ideally, probably just get a getter to see if what it's doing. Melee attack montage. Okay, we're going to need probably more things in the header. But for right now, generate definition. But for right now, I am going to just start filling out the logic for the melee attack. So I know we need a U and um, instance. So the anim instance, and then we're going to do a git mesh, git mesh, and then git anim instance. Then from there, you need to check the anim instance. And what we can do is just do an if statement. If anim instance. Basically, you're checking to make sure it's not null, and then a melee, melee attack montage. So, I don't want to do that. Hit the wrong key. So, what we're doing is just checking to make sure the anim instance is there, and the melee attack montage is set. 
no reason to run this logic if it's not set. Uh, plus, I think it might give you an error. Yeah, if you'd like to try that out, just go ahead and remove it and see if it throws an error and what it says. So, we need a get number of montage sections. Because if you remember, we added attack one and two. So, we added like two uh, sections in there. So, get number of montage section. And the int 32, it's going to be a const section count is what I called it. And then we'll do a melee attack montage. And we do a composite sections, composite sections, because this is all that you can use. You can get the animation posed, get the group name, things like that. But what we need to do is do a composite sections. And then we're just going to do a dot num to actually calculate it. And the it uh, doesn't really tell you anything, but if you go to the UAnim Montage documents for Unreal Engine, just type in UAnim Montage C++ in Google, look for the Unreal Engine documents, and when you go to the doc and start reading it, you'll see some of the functions that you can call. And what I was having an issue with is, well, I need to know how many sections there was. Because some enemies will have two attacks, some will have four attacks. Uh, so I just needed to be able to get that. So what we're doing is we're doing composite sections. We're counting how many sections are in the melee attack montage. And save that real quick. Get the random animation to play. And get section index and playtime to use for timer. So what we need to do is we have a section name. And we want it to be random. So what I did for my other project, get a text section name. So what I'm going to do is look, get a text section name. I'm going to put the header file over here. So we're just going to do F name. Get attack section name. This will make sense once we start doing it. And then we pass in a section count. A section count is this right here, this section count. We're counting number of <clears throat> sections in that montage. Go ahead and generate the definition. I'm going to jump back into the header file and put it in protected. Yeah. Let's just go here. Let me close this out. So we're into the get attack section name. So we know we are going to return a section name. No, that's not what I want. But first, we need to actually create it. So, F name, it's going to be an F name, and it's going to be a section name. And what we want to do is we want to do a const int 32 section. We're going to do an F math because here I'll explain it once I'm done with it. And we're just going to do a range. 
a random rand range, I believe. Yep. Rand range. And it can be from one to the section count. So So what we're doing is you basically get a random section in a montage. Because up here we have the section count. Let's say we have we have two of them. So then we have attack one, attack two. So we're going to be doing get attack section name when we're going to pass in a section count and then we are going to in an int32 this section is just a random range between one and two so it's going to bring back either attack one or attack two so if you had four it would be a random range from one to four, attack two, attack three, attack one, whatever. That's just a good way to have the enemy randomize their attacks. And if you have combos, you add those combos into a attack section in your montage. You can just put together two animations and you can have like attack two. That could be a combo. So, what we have to do now is we have to do a switch, a switch, and what we're going to switch on is section, and then we are going to do a case one, and let's see, cast, no, case one that will be either let's say section name equals f name and I think we just called it attack one and we'll just do a break then we will do a case two and section name f name and attack two and we'll do a break and then what we need to do is return section name and of course I didn't put a default in there and that's probably what that's complaining about default cases not handled that is yeah okay so we have that set up. So now we have the section, the get attack section name. And get random attack section name. And I'll scroll back up to enemy melee attack from montage okay so we got an int 32 count get a random animation to play animation to play then get section index and play time to use for the timer because we're going to be setting up a timer 
you're going to learn how to do timers now. So, what else? We need to do an F name. And it's going to be a const. It's going to be the section name. Section name. And get attack section name. And what are we going to pass in? Well, we know it's a section count. Because right here, section count, we're counting one and two. Attack one and two, we're going to pass that in. Then... We are going to do an int 32. That's going to be const. That's going to be section index equals melee attack montage. And that is going to be get section index. Whoops. Section name. Because we need the section index, get section index. I found that out by looking at the documentation for you and a montage. The C section for you and a montage in the Unreal docs. So we need a float const section length. Melee attack montage and we need get section length. And what we're going to get, we're going to get that index. Now, the section length, the reason we're doing that is because of the timer. So, you want to wait. So, when the enemy is attacking, I just want to run a timer. Let's say it takes two seconds for the enemy to attack. I don't want it to attack again. I just want that timer to play. Or that montage to play. Because what we're going to do is we are going to disable. Wow, I can't type early in the morning have not had enough coffee disable enemy movement then re-enable after timer finish is so we get the character get the character movement oops and disable movement. That's pretty much. That's it. And you can do a lot of things with. Uh, whoops. You can do a lot of things with that. You can do crouch, deactivate, launch, mass, or allow swim, add force, whatever. Now what we are doing is we are going to play a montage section. And what we're going to do is the anim instance a montage play. And we're going to play that melee attack montage we're going to be setting. And an anim instance. And what we are going to do is we need to jump to that section. Montage jump to section. And what are we going to pass in? We're going to pass in the section name up here. Get attack section name section count. So the section name and melee attack montage. So jump to section. You need section name and you need the UANA montage, which is the melee attack montage. Now we need to set up a timer. So we need to set up a timer. And we're just going to do it in the private section here. I'm just going to come down here and let's see. Timer for playing 
montage. If I remember if we're playing attack montage. Attack montage. And it's going to be an F timer handle. Timer attack. And go ahead and save that. And we're going to need a re enable because we disabled the movement. What we need to do is re enable the movement or reset movement back to walk. So reset movement walk. That can be in the protected section. Get melee attack. We'll just put it right here. Avoid reset movement walk. And what we'll do is come down here, used for disabling movement, uh, yeah, used after disabling movement. So you can use this for anything. You don't have to use it just for the montage, if you're disabling the enemy movement for some reason. You can, and then you need to re-enable that movement. You can just set it. You can just use this function. So we'll just go ahead and generate definition for that. Set movement. And what I'm going to do, reset enemy movement. I'm just going to do get character movement and then set movement mode. Set default, set movement mode, first one. Set movement mode, and what we need is move, walking. So you have move walking, and then you have move nav walking. Move nav walking is they can only walk where there's a, I believe there's a nav mesh bounds or something like that. You have to look that up. Uh, Actually, it's in the blueprint. You can go to the Chimera enemy and click on the movement component there on the left, and then there is a section for that. It's like movement, nav, move, nav, walking, nav, walking, and some other things. You can hover over that, and then it will explain what it does. So, we have that. Now we need... Uh, I need a set of timer. Let me go ahead and type this out and then explain it. Get the world timer manager. And then we want to set the timer. Set the timer. And then we want to pass in the timer attack because and then this and then a enemy reset movement for walking and then we want to pass in the section length So when you hover over set timer, it basically tells you the parameters. Set the timer to call the given native function at a set interval. If a timer is already set for this handle, it will replace the current timer. And the timer handle is the timer attack. So parameters in out handle, just pass timer refers to an existing timer and then in object object to call the timer function on of course it's going to be this object in timer 
method, method to call when the timer fires. The end rate, the amount of time in seconds between set and firing. And of course, if less than or equals to zero on the float, clears existing timers. <clears throat> Now we didn't loop it and then we didn't do in first delay, but you can read this and see what these parameters do. Also, Tom Lohman, Tom Lohman, I think it's L O O M A N, Tom Lohman. If you go to his website, he has a blog post about timers. That's where I went to learn about C timers from Tom Lohman. Okay, so I believe all of this may work. Here, let's do a build real quick and see if I messed anything up. And if I did, we'll figure it out. Build succeeded. Okay, so I believe this will work. Okay, so I had to do some looking around uh, to figure out because my main project I'm using behavior trees. We're not doing that right now. That's going to be a different tutorial series. So after looking at this project, what we did, if we come up here, what we did is one component began overlap attack sphere. It's just basic prototype and implement interface with common character, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we got enemy, at, enemy main attack. So what I did was I just jumped into the code and I uh, looked for enemy main attack. Enemy main attack is blueprint callable. So what we are going to do is remove that. And then we're going to go to enemy CPP, enemy main attack, because it says called from enemy class. We are going to remove that. So, and what we are going to do is remove it from here. Go ahead and compile and save jump back into your Wukong character code. The enemy.h I don't think we need anymore or the enemy.cpp. So we have to enemy melee da, 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 da. I don't think we really need anything in the constructor. So we have this melee attack that, that's playing the montage and we need to play it. So what we are going to do we're going to do a u function of a blueprint callable void main melee attack. Since we're not using behavior trees yet, we're going to have to do this a little bit different and this is just going to be code that we're going to remove in the future i just want to get this working u function blueprint callable void main melee attack or what we're going to do is we're just going to generate the definition real quick and what we're going to do is we have all this right here the montage stuff and it's under melee attack so what we can do, you can do like this and just do <coughs> melee attack. <coughs> or you can just say melee attack. And we can just say logic to run and um, montage attack from, from section. 
And this is, we're just going to put a to do in here. And what we're going to say is refactor this. when doing behavior tree. So we know that we're gonna just basically remove this right here when we are doing behavior trees. And no, I don't wanna do that, but what I can do is just cancel, shut down the editor and just run a build real quick. Okay, so the build succeeded. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and run it. Let's see what happens. And if it's not working, we'll figure it out. If it's working, that's good. Skip restore. Okay, so um, in the Chimera Blueprint, where we have the on seat pawn, the event tech to walk around, which is going to be refactored into behavior trees refactor into behavior tree. And this is going to be refactor and C++. That will be in later section. And then true is going to be main, main melee attack. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Let's see if Camaro will actually see us. Come on. Oh, nope. You know, we have to chase this bad boy around. And it's not going to work. And you want to know why? Well, well, there's a good reason why. Because we need the melee attack montage. We need to set Chimera Attack Montage. There we go. Compile, save, and you know what I'm going to do is comment this whole thing. And I'm just going to say refactor into C plus plus and behavior tree. So now we know we are going to refactor all of this into behavior trees. Okay. So we have the melee attack montage set. So now let's try this again. Do, 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 do. Oh, 
Oh. Well, the spear is kind of off, but it did attack. The spear is kind of kind of big, I guess. So let's instead of three hundred, let's do one hundred and fifty. Or 175. Yeah. That 300 was kind of big. So, let's go ahead and try this again. Do, 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 do. Okay. See, it attacks, but then it just goes back into whatever it does. See, it did a different attack. So, it does different attacks, which is good. And you come in here, see, it did that attack. And if you come back in here, well, it did that attack again. And it did that attack again. Let's see if we can get a different attack. There we go, got a different attack. Okay, so that's all working. Of course, it's not set up ideal. I mean, this right here, this right here is okay. If you want to set up your project up like this, uh, I mean, it's not ideal, but like we have a comment here, refactoring the C++ and behavior trees. We're going to remove, uh, in the next series, we're going to remove all of this and refactor it into C++ and behavior trees. And then we're going to be creating behavior trees within the editor from our C++ code. And we're going to be using all kinds of nice stuff. So let's go ahead and compile and save this. So it is working with our prototype blueprint. So that is all I wanted to do for this video because the damage because right now we can do damage to the enemy but the enemy cannot do damage to us so if you want to try and tackle that uh, just make sure you back up your code uh, and then go ahead and try it yourself and then in the next lesson we are going to be doing damage to the player so what I would like to do is if you want to go ahead and leave, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do anything new, but what I am going to do is save select. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through what we just did. So I'm going to recap what we just did. We went into the enemy melee because we're dealing with melee. We're doing a uh, melee attack montage. We did a forward declaration, and I'm just going to put a comment up here, declarations. So we had to forward declare you in a montage because we're telling it to, that we're using it within CPP. And in the header file, we did class you in a montage, forward declare it. And then we, in the protective section, melee attack montage. We do avoid a melee attack. We have to set up a timer used after disabling the movement. So the avoid, we reset movement walking. We have to set up an F name, get attack section name. It's an int32 section name. Montage for melee attack. We set up the melee attack montage and we set it within the blueprint. The timer for playing attack montage. This is the timer handle that you need for when you're disabling the movement. And then once the animation plays, you need to re-enable the movement. And that's what this is, reset movement walking. And a blueprint callable. This remove we're just going to do a to do remove 
when behavior tree is working. So we set up a blueprint callable function to be able to call the melee attack that we have. So we just did main, main melee attack. Of course, this is going to be removed for later. We jump into the CPP. What we do is we, we set up a melee attack. We set up me melee attack. We did U anim instance. Get the mesh, get the anim instance. We have to check to make sure the anim instance is valid and the melee attack montage is set. So get number of montage sections. That's the attack one and attack two. Then we get random animation to play, get the section index, and, and play time to use for the timer. So we get the section name. We get attack section name. So get attack section name is down here. Get attack section name and 32 section count. Because we just did the section count, then we pass in pass in that. We do a switch statement to just get a get random section in range. And then we that's where the randomness of the enemy attacks come from is this right here. And then we do the switch and then we just return section name. And then we come back up here, we get the section length because then we need to disable the movement. So get section length and then get character movement, disable the movement, play the montage with the melee attack montage, jump to section, which is the section name from the random count and from the switch. And then we do get world timer, set a timer. Then the timer handle is the attack timer and then, of course, this object. A enemy melee, set movement walking. You need, you need this in order to re-enable the walking for the enemy. And, of course, the section length. This is the timer. How long is the timer going to run? The section length of the melee attack that we're doing from get section length, section index. And reset movement walking, get character movement, set movement mode back to walking. And of course, refactor this when doing behavior tree. So we do main melee attack because none of this is going to work if we can't call it. And the way we called it was using a blueprint callable function. Blueprint callable function main melee attack. And then we call this main melee attack called from enemy blueprint. So this main melee attack main main melee attack is called from the blueprint. And when that is called, it fires off the melee attack to run all the logic we just ran through. So that's basically all I have. As you can see, it's working uh, the way we have it set up in Blueprints. Not ideal, but it will be refactored. So that's all I have. Bye for now.